am going to begin by uh, quoting a line of poetry that I once wrote. Art is the heart of startle. Art is in the word heart, and it's also in the word startle. And what we like, I think, uh, in works of verbal art is to, to be surprised. And there are two ways I try to work this out in my poems, uh, many of which are sonnets. And so the first way, the, the, the more limited way, uh, is the Shakespeare way. I'm never too old to learn from Shakespeare. And I learned when uh, making my book called Shakespeare, uh, where I interviewed him uh, and writing, responding to his loved poems in, lo in sonnets of my own, uh, that uh, you, you do well if you end off your 14-liner, that's what a sonnet is, very very brief, I love a punch at the end, with a sudden turn in an unexpected direction so that uh, uh, the reader, uh, a, new, a new light is cast on everything and certain questions are raised as well as the situation being clarified unexpectedly. That's a kind of surprise, but there's a broader based surprise and it is a more universal kind. And that is the fact that what you come to realize very soon is that you have uh, cre created when you write a poem about a taxi driver uh, uh, interview. It's an interview with a fictive taxi driver, and that's the whole point. You are transforming it into a work of art, a work of imagination. Uh, the taxi driver and you and any other passenger that happens to be there are all going to speak in uh, rhythms, just as uh, you, uh, you have in, in the songs on the radio, regular rhythms, uh, and then there are rhymes, uh, intricate rhyme patterns, and on top of that, what you have is a rather special thing, um, uh, which I follow as Shakespeare does. Uh, that is, every time you have a vowel, it appears not once but twice. Every time you have a given consonant, it appears not once but at least twice. In this way, you don't have anomalies, you anomalies, but you have harmonies, and the po the whole poem, in other words, is has internal rhymes all the way through it. It is what I call thorough rhymed. So uh, these are these are skills for the heightening of feeling, because we love melody, we love harmony. We love rhythm, and uh, what we do then is transform the a moment of your life into a moment of of word song. I call it word song because it's so musical, and I love. In fact, I'm a singer myself, and I love to set some of my poems to music, and I've done it a number of times and illustrated that process on YouTube. Boy, I better stop talking pretty soon because what the main thing I want to do is to share with you how interesting it is to write the poems that taxi drivers give you. I'll just add one explanatory note. I have um, an eye problem, which uh, I'm capitalizing. I'm making the most, uh, getting dividends from my, my uh, uh partial disability. In other words, I have wonderful eyes. They're not getting any worse, and they've served me well for the last 76 years, but they don't work together when one is on, the other is off. So, uh, and they switch of their own accord, so I can't control that. And unless you have stereo vision, you don't see depth. Therefore, I'm not really entitled to drive a car, and I don't. If you have to take cabs, however, here's how you make the most of it. She growled and loudly at the cat she hadn't known. Our long-haired yellow Persian spotted from my yard. That feline, new arrival, didn't take it hard, but mewed and whimpered with a sweet, entreating moan. In confrontation, moveless, for a time they stood in silence never broken, neither willed to yield. Contrasting kinds, but equal power seemed to wield the yellow cat, the white-pawed black one, as they should. The latter slightly turned some inches to the side. The other never stirred. Security improved from Blackie's point of view, though Goldie hadn't moved. I had to go. The taxi came. The driver cried, You popped up out of nowhere! He had never thought that I'd be waiting in the chill and watching cats. I told him everything I've written here, and that's the way it stands, the way they're standing. Have you not enjoyed observing animals? They scare me. Oh, the ones on city streets pop up just when you least. And aren't they harmful? No, a cat's a friendly beast. They're shy. Most won't approach, not even when you call. To Wegmans, please. That's good. I run a market, too. 
with food from many other lands, my specialty. What country do you come from? I'm a Kurd. I see. We've many Kurds in Vestal. Glad to welcome you. There's a little bit of a surprise, huh? Uh, we, you thought we'd be talking about cats fighting. And instead of that, talk about what happens when you've lived in a place for a long time where people are fighting. The discomfort stays, even in a quiet locale such as Vestal in upstate New York. Here's another fun talk uh, with, with a fictive cap cab driver. And uh, what's nice here is once again the way in the true Shakespeare fashion, this is a sonnet. No, is it? Yes, it exactly is. And uh, in the in the last uh, uh, few words, you get a, a switch of topic in an altered perspective. Petable animals with smooth, soft muzzles trip to the zoo. Look forward to a treat. That's what he told the kids in. Really neat. Ad libs for word insertion. Logic puzzles the nine-year-old, a girl, will solve before her father can. She holds in mind the clues. There's nothing this fond parent would refuse the children that have made his life. The more he thinks of it, the happier he grows. The baby, only five months old, he knows, like all three older kids, will be a joy forever. Wiped away those early days when drugged and maddened parents failed to raise their son. A foster home had helped the boy. Now for the next one, we have something uh, just a little different. I like to in institute differences here and there, keep things lively. In this one, the cab driver only says three words at the beginning. We had been talking before. Apparently, the topic was raised about uh, whether you ought to look forward to a heaven or hell, to post-mortal demotion or promotion or some kind of change, some kind of post-mortal something, and some kind of afterlife. Uh, <laughs> Reminds me of the joke where the guy uh, uh, says, um, you know, I, th I think a lot about the hereafter. I go into a room and, and I stand there and I think, now what was I hereafter? Well, anyway, so uh, uh, here, let's begin. He, he reacts to our discussion so far with grave disappointment because I'm not interested in, in post-mortal lives, frankly. I think it's bad manners to ask for second helpings when you've had such a, 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 a rich generosity given out to you in the first one. Look searching mirrored. What a waste, he said. The cab had slowly turned the corner. I had claimed a readiness when I should die to be recycled, not in fancy-led form of a spirit rising, but to lie deep in the earth, long worm and maggot-fed, sunflower, snail, rose roots and tendrils, lead, thirsting for life juice, vein and arm and eye, pancreas, fingernail and elbow. Why disdain? Hold back. That loan of lusty head. Linger, no need. I know that we are wed. Dark sky and bursting earth. Birth and to die. Chiasmic anthem. Euphemy, your bread and wine. White carmen, wasteful to deny. Slightly controversial. Also, uh, I use a lot of strange words in that poem, but uh, I don't like to footnote things. I like to just get you excited about the experience. And then if you want to look things up, there's no, you, it's easy to do on the uh, uh, internet. You Google it and one minute later, you know whatever you wanted to, uh, to learn. Now this next poem uh, is one where I'm a bit of a Sherlock Holmes. I'm looking around me in the cab and seeing what I can deduce. And then when the... Uh, a cab driver speaks, uh, I listen to what she says, and I sum it up in this uh, indirect statement form where I'm, I'm not quoting her directly, but I am uh, using the language that she used in trying to convey the flavor of that. So it's her thoughts, but as turned over in my mind while I uh, shift perspectives and weigh the different factors, the objects and the words. Curled cover, Turned up corners, doorstop block, 
that vasty hagiography, a tome, 800 pages, let her dreaming roam across the world of St. Teresa, rock of piety and guide against the shock of modern times. Their wiles invade the home like smoke. The rosaries are hung on chrome together with deodorizers. Knock on wood. Oh dear, she would resolve to quit that smoking habit. She's quite sick of it. Her one addictive ill, insistent vice. Saint aided, daily she will pray to hit that far cold turkey target. I admit it's hard. No pearl, a pleasure of great price. Oh, I have the most cheerful of wishes for her. She's such a good-hearted person. And that 800-page bio of St. Teresa is bound to assist her greatly. You came back here from Nashville, Tennessee? But why? Revisit chilly times and heavy graying air? Wasn't it gratifying driving cab down there? Oh, sure, the tourists and the steady sunlight try to find a nicer place. They're all relaxed and glad. They'll even make you take a course in courtesy. That's a requirement of the taxi company. They're friendlier. They talk more slowly. But my dad, I really love my dad. And now he's had a fall calcification of the brain and he forgets it's good for me to be back here because after all i want to help him out those grand old opry sets and all of that don't matter nothing much to lose i love my dad he needs me here i can't refuse It's a joy to remember him and his dad in my word music. I hope you liked it. Now here's another kind of sonnet altogether. Sure, more than 30 years, played bass guitar and traveled halfway around the world. And here, we did a hundred weddings every year. Greek, lots of Jewish. Weirdest one by far, a big Italian wedding, and the bride, this is unusual, proposed a toast. Enjoy the food and music. Get the most fun you can have. It's paid for. But beside that, let me tell you, come next Monday, this man will not be my husband. It will be annulled, our marriage. And the reason he slept with the maid of honor just last night. Two years fast forward, she had found the right man. Now she toasted him. Really? And bliss. Well, a lot of my uh, cab driver poems are about going from one city to another and the differences you encounter. That's a big part of the life of a taxi driver. This one I particularly enjoy because uh, he, was, he introduced all sorts of celebrities. I don't even have a television, so I never see these people, but uh, he brings them to life for me. A year and a half, then I had to leave. Start work at six, 90 degrees. You think you need a shower? Jerry Springer's pink bunker type house stands out. You won't believe how huge the ones that Oprah, Stephen King, have built with King. It looks like a hotel. More money in that town than any. Well, an acre costs a million. Here, same thing for 7,000. House that needs repair, small yard, say 40 a year, 225. Had to get out though soon to stay alive. The weather wears you down. I couldn't do more than six hours a day and rent down there. I'll take this cab and cool and calmer too. 
I always seem to take uh, make the most out of uh, anything positive at the end. And I, it has a lot to do with my uh, uh, brain chemicals. I have happy brain chemicals and I cannot take uh, melancholy for so long. And I, uh, and I do not uh, suffer from depression, but uh, instead I have uh, uh, unexpected gleams of, I don't know what to call it. Oh, now the, here, here's one uh, that is really remarkable. Uh, in, in lots of ways, and I'll point out maybe a couple after, afterward, or, or maybe I won't. I just want you to feel the power of it. Tattoos, referring to the tunes he wrote, were what we'd spoken of the time before. See, I get to know some of these people quite well. Don't sing or play much, though. Not anymore. Two years. Been too depressed to write a note. Divorced. She's got my kids. The court, the whole messy. I need to pick it up again. No lessons taught myself. That's best, because then you'll be unique, not playing someone's role. 42 songs I've written, and 13 on disc. For young and old, you should have seen. It's universal music. Rhythm and blues, classic rock, light rock, metal, blues rock. It's an outlet, gives relief. Alert, he sits forward and focused on the music news. We spent more than half that poem talking about being depressed. And then look what you get at the end of it. He really keeps himself alive with that wonderful interest. Here we have a little for a little interlude, something different. Instead of talking to a cab driver, I actually have the, I don't know, the whimsy or the temerity to turn myself into one. I, I'm looking out the window and uh, feeling the breeze. I always love that. Not the AC. I like nature's own wind. And I'm thinking, if I were a taxi driver and I were being interviewed, what would I like to say? And here's my response. Give me this mantle of a grace-rich green, no pallid ramage of a hard-parched fall. I'm glad when two-thirds through September all the hearty health of summer can be seen. Brown gold siennas of the hardy mums with oranges and ochre overspread herald the advent of the after red and yellow of the turning when it comes. Till then take heart, the gull that glided by, the chirping, flurried sparrows by the score, wisps of a Chinese white on pallid blue, they're of an allegory made for you. The cool that brisks the blood through hair and pore, a hymn of answer to our silent why? Now we get a lot of um, uh, foreign uh, born taxi drivers uh, at Binghamton. It's quite an international center, Binghamton University. And here I am talking to a man from Algeria. And I had given him a book uh, of, that I had written about. Um, Mm, well, they were comments from my heart on uh, passages from the Quran that I had read. I've published two books like that with Amazon so far. Uh, I, like a fortune teller, I open the Quran. I see what I've, what I, what's there. If I like it, I may make a poem about it. If not, maybe I'll close the book and open it again. I'm far more often rewarded than not because the book is an incomparable treasury of spiritual wealth. So here's a conversation that we have together about uh, the book based on Quran. Algerian born, the taxi driver I, a lyric volume based on scripture gave. Quranic lore we both have treasured. Why the surahs that their lines on mind engrave and comment verses might adorn, not try. My English though, I worry, could it be not good enough to catch the metaphor if written in a phrasing that, for me, might seem, I have to say it, something more than I can understand, a problem. See? 
No problems posed if it's the kind of thing the ear enjoys. I'm trying for a trance. So sweetly will the music need to sing, it can the hearer's feeling heart enhance. And if he's happy with the listening, and if the meaning's not entirely clear, the main thing's still achieved. If you desire, you might look up some words you liked to hear and get the meaning reason may require. Translation, though, is what I hold most dear. It's amazing. You can sense it already, can't you? The, the wealth of friends I have acquired. This is an astonishing poem uh, because of the deep feeling. I, I, you can hardly believe, I could hardly believe that I had just met this person. Two groups have songs about them. Guess the moon and bright lit blossom. That's already rare. Would be so brilliant in the midnight air. Amazing cactus flower. It happened soon after our wedding. I had bought one, small, was just a little guy, and covered all over with hair above the prickles. Then, for 13 years, took care of it, and when the reddish knob on top got wider, I would see how every day a purple-pink emerging edge got huger. I would think of neon. Next, it grew a yellow eye. We separated, and I watched it die. Now my next one goes back to an early uh, Let's see, I think the one about the uh, St. Teresa and, and the uh, deodorizer, uh, the smoking poem, where I uh, listen and don't actually quote anything, but, but I, um, I, I let the, the driver's thoughts blend with mine and do a kind of uh, free and direct discourse, free indirect statement where I, kind of, I try to use his language his, his mo to get inside his mode of thought and blend it with mine. The changing sets of heaven theater present an upward look in depth of sea with turbulence that gentleness can be had made within the curling surf occur a surface movement gaining strength and stir from wind that lower, higher, secretly and quietly is working up a whir of current swirl that yet is feathery. The glad effect, as of a holiday, is clear in what I hear the cabbie say. The heat effect moves up and down, and so the driver's mood is high or low, and two, the taxi business, wait at home or go. The former is the best whenever you no sooner think of sweating than you do. That's how they feel this week in Tokyo. Isn't that interesting? You really have to get to the end of the poem, the last word, in order to realize that all the seashore imagery and surf and sea breezes that I was conjuring up were not mine at all, but uh, they came from what the cabbie was telling me about driving in Tokyo. Oh, I love this one. Uh, I'll never see, I'll never see this uh, woman again, but I'll never, I hope I'll never forget. I hope my word music makes other people never forget her and her glorious, lovely granddaughter. Listen to this. We're going down, I'm from Manhattan, so you see, we're walking right down Broadway and we suddenly, my granddaughter and I were noticing the way a lady, dirty, old, with, with tattered bags, would stay a moment, stop before a window, raise her hand, and look inside and wave. A little while she'd stand, and then move on again as soon as she'd been seen. I asked aloud what it was for. What might it mean? My granddaughter, 
Naomi, it's a name that means pleasant, who comes upon the deepest thought, it seems. She helped me understand. She wants to wave the world goodbye. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. The next, uh, it takes a little energy because the woman who t tells me this is very, very excited. But I, I'm with her in spirit when she gets excited. It really means something, the excitement. She's telling me what crucial things about her life. She's telling me the kind of life it's in. My car was flooded, so I called to see if maybe the pastor knew of someone who'd be driving by the neighborhood I live in on the way to church. It seemed a reasonable thing enough, but he, instead of answering and truly helping me, said, do you think that 911, he heard me cry. Yes, I forgot to tell you, weeping like a baby. Your name and number, patience left me in the lurch. I thought he'd try to call some people who would come and take me, lock me up, who knows what they would do. You, do you go to church? Well, no, but I would say uh, from childhood on, I've kept religion in my head. Well, that's the best. I'm glad I got to talk to you. I slammed that phone. It wasn't rude and wasn't dumb. My father came to mind, a Christian. He, instead of kindness, slapped us all before we went to pray. And now for my last poem. It isn't the least, it isn't the most, it's different. I love variety, I love diversity, and I love it most in friendship. The beloving imaginer, I hope I'll ever remain. So here's one, and it also has a bit of a Shakespeare sudden twist at the end, well, I like that. He suddenly changed his mind and I worked it in. He worked it in. I've gone across the country on my motorbike and been so tired. One time I stopped and just unclosed the trailer, grabbed a sleeping bag, flopped down and dozed. I thought I'd have a nap, but slept five hours more like. And when I woke, discovered I had blocked the way when someone else had tried to leave. He'd done his best to get to me, but no, my dog had stood the test. He'd never let a stranger wake me up. He'd stay and guard that little grassy plot, show teeth. You know, another guy I met, he'd got a little rug. He fastened to his tank. The dog kept good and snug and traveled round the country. Anywhere they'd go, just hanging on that little bit of rug. And so they shared their summertime adventure. Let it flow. Thank you. Mm -hmm.